Hello, hello everybody! I am, of course, the lovely Briefcase here with the talented Mito, who happens to have a tickle in his throat, it sounds like, bringing you the last and third finals game of the ESPL Weekly Series number three. So, uh, of course, this is still between Denial Esports and Seed Nullis. Would be a little bit odd if things or teams swapped out, but of course that isn't the case. And uh, you know what? You guys have heard exactly what ESPL is every single time. We've gone into the draft, weekly tournament, $100, yada yada. Let's just get into the draft and see some really good Dota, because I am damn excited to see what happens in this last game. Yep, this is the last game of the night. I mean, we're all hoping to see something big, like what? PI3 Grand Finals Game 5? Wow. Right? Come on, That's let's see want. some Wisp. Oh yeah, let's see some CK. Oh man, I've been dying to see some CK. Ah. <laughs> I, I love my CK set, but none of my teammates will allow me to use it. <laughs> that, that hero is so ridiculously cool. I mean, the cosmetics? Ugh, out of the world. Nothing compares to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's just... I don't know, with CK it always seems to be... How many spikes can we add to this guy? <laughs> yeah... I don't know. Mine doesn't have that many spikes, but it looks so cool. I mean, if I ever get to play an ESPO, I'll show you. And you can cast it for me. Ah. Right. Will do. And right off the bat, boom! First pick Pugna out of Seed Nullis. Also getting rid of that Timber and the Venno, like they've done every single time. But of course, that means the Naga Siren's coming through. And with these pretty, pretty quick bands and pickups, it seems like each team really does know what they want in these lineups. And right off the bat, Seed Nullis, with just these two heroes, you need to be terrified of these early push of an early push strat coming out in denial I mean clearly with Naga Siren you assume that that's got to be a carry with how they love to run her and right off the bat you got to think you know what what can get us enough time so that Naga Siren can actually stop these pushes okay um so both teams they're going for something they're very comfortable with this time around they're, they're, they're choosing the best heroes uh, see Nullis, they're going for the Pugna, and it's immediately counterpicked by like Naga Siren and Nyx Assassin. And Nyx Assassin one on one, that hero destroys Pugna completely. You want to use the Dickerify and Blast, he turns on Spike Carapace. You you reserve those spells, then he mana burns you. So it, it's Nyx Assassin is my absolute favorite against heroes like Pugna. Um, it renders the hero pretty useless, but then again, the Dota isn't just about laning phase. You gotta look at the grand scheme of things. And so far, Pugna, Shadow Shaman, that's great pushing right there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Deny Esports picks up a Cube of the Light. That hero just pairs up with Naga Siren so well. And it's, it basically it stalls and ends. It's like the Terminator of pushes. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Predator? Are you... Okay, so who who would you would you call Keeper of the Light? Was it the Terminator of pushes, the Predator of pushes, possibly the Alien of pushes? Dude, okay, you know what? Give me one second. Okay, you know what? He's a Chuck Norris of uh, ending all pushes. I understand. He just basically roundhouse kicks every single creep. <laughs> you can't be Chuck Norris. Oh yeah, fair enough. And I mean now it just doesn't happen. <laughs> Denial, they've banned out Prophet and <coughs> Bristleback, which of course Prophet even just would even throw throw even more push push power onto this fire that Seed Nullis seems to be cultivating right there. And they pick up a, a Storm Spirit, which of course he's not the best anti pusher per se, but great at finding pickoffs. But with the way that Seed Nullis is drafting right now, it almost just feels like come about, you know, 10, 12 minutes in once almost every single one of them has their six, they're going to be five-man pushing every single chance they get. So I'm not too sure how strong of a hero Storm Spirit oh. really is. And, I mean, you just look at Seed Nullis and you got to say, okay, what can we pick up to weather this storm? Because, god damn it, are our towers going to be falling. They need to pick Chuck Norris. <laughs> I mean, it, it works so well with Storm Spirit and Naga Siren. Um, those two are, like very mana intensive heroes and as well as being able to stop a push um there's no initiation um well there's no great initiation from c Nellis unless shadow shaman gets a blink dagger um so a keeper of the light will do pretty good against a heavy pushing sure 
Death Prophet and Rasta, they're not really reliant on having the creep wave to go with them. As soon as they reach the um, tower range, I mean DP with the ultimate and Rasta with the Snake Wards. Um, but yeah, I mean if you can, if you if you if you have a good Keep of the Light player, and you know when the creeps are gonna reach a tower, the blast should hit the creep wave even bef like before they ever get in tower range. Oh yeah, so I think yeah, you you've mentioned how good Keeper of the Light is. Obviously, it's stopping pushes, and and you also you did touch on the fact. Something I was going to bring up is that Shadow Shaman and Death Prophet, and Pugna for that matter, these are not heroes that actually rely very heavily on the creep wave to really tank things or deal with them, but of course, there is the Chuck Norris of anti-push coming into it. Keeper of the Light, going to hopefully be pretty useful along with Naga Siren, and I mean, Keeper of the Light, Naga Siren, Nyx Assassin, if they want to run that as a tri-lane, that seems pretty terrifying in its own right. Terrifying, I should have said. Oh, ah, denial. They should have banned on the Clockwork um, if they're going to pick up the Keep of the Light. Um, well, Keep of the Light is the easiest target to ever hook for Clockwork. I mean, you're just going to be standing there and charging. I mean, anything, any skill would just hit you. I mean, POTM arrow, Clockwork hook, punch hook. I don't know. What else can you throw at a hero? <laughs> a standstill hero. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, Keep of the Light, a good pickup, but now, with that awkward pickup, it seems almost like Seed Nullis saw it coming a mile away. And All Denial has been uh, banning since the Slark and... <clears throat> since the Slark and Doom banouts, which of course, those those good respect banouts, it's just basically trying to get rid of really strong pushers. And with the way Seed Nullis has been drafting, I mean, that's basically seems like what they need to be doing. Clockwork, though... Now it just feels like it was baited out, you know, that Keeper of the Light. Clockwork counters him so terrifically. Yep, and CNLS can still pick up a Jakiro, which is another great pushing hero. Um, and it does offer a little bit more of a lockdown, and it pairs up very nicely with Clockwork. Um, the Clockwork cog into um, Macropire, Ice Path. Um, yes, and the Liquify is always good for pushing towers, and you don't, you don't have to actually constantly attack the tower you just have to get the liquid fire off and then the tower will just kind of burn um so like no. this this is a death push no dude and you want you want on. lichen that's what you want <laughs> come on you want even lichen. more push on seed nellis that's what you need even more i want push. tinker that, that that's what i want i really want a tinker i know you do <laughs> you've seen it the whole tournament <laughs> i still want that tinker yeah. Uh, so, I mean, what do you think Denial can really do right now? They have Naga Siren, which is clearly going to be their carry role. And from the looks of it, yeah, they have Keeper of the Light, but with Clockwork available, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to sustain too long. Once they do, it, at the very least, Seed Nullis, it looks like we'll be able to take all the Tier 1s and Tier 2s. I think High Ground might be another issue, but of course, Serpent Wards and Exorcism is such an incredibly potent combo for taking High Ground in and of itself that, I mean, they might not have too much difficulty. Oh yeah, Seed Nullis, they can go for a Void as well, right? Oh yeah. Uh, that would actually be... No, no, actually, no, 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 no. That means it has to be a support partner in that scenario, and that's not very... I, I don't think that's what they want, so I'm pretty sure the last hero should be a support. Uh, but I've been wrong so many times today, so I don't even know what to think. <laughs> oh yeah, and I mean now it looks like Denial, they're using up all of their time, they're really not sure what they should be picking up right now it seems. And a life stealer of all things, and for me, kind of an odd pickup. Obviously, you have that life stealer bomb in Storm Spirit, and you can set something really big up with <coughs> Naga Siren's song. But I mean, Exorcism is still gonna make him melt. Shadow Shaman's Serpent Wards, that's all physical damage as well. And while Life Stealer can tank it fairly nicely, I mean, it's really the rage which you which you get him for. Oh. Is that going to be an offlane lifestealer? Or even say, they have a lot of options in this particular lineup. Um, they can run the Storm as a carry, uh, lifestealer offlane. They can run the Nyx offlane, a support Naga. Um, yeah, they have a lot of ways to play around with it. And I thought it would have been a more tower defensive hero, like say Windrunner or something. Um, or even Elder Titan, or even Puck offlane. 
um, Tinker Offlane, or even Magnetar. Um, Magnetar's out. But oh, you're right. It's been. Oh my up. god. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh oh god. <clears throat> Are you kids ready for some of the biggest team fights yet to see? With probably the largest amount of sprites coming out in a very long time, with zombies and exorcism included. This is going to be. Well, I, I suspect one to remember, remember at the very least. But let's quickly get over to who is playing who. Smurf, once again, the carry. Going to be playing the Lifestealer DK as the mid. Storm Spirit, looks like we have Exiled as the... Oh, it's actually, they've switched it up. Looks, what I thought was originally going to be a carry Naga Siren. Going to be a support Naga Siren of all things. Not uh, particularly expected, I have to say. Looks like we have Saylan in that new set for Nyx Assassin, and of course Defect gonna be playing as the Keeper of the Light. Mito, would you like to take TCN, my friend? Yeah, absolutely. So we have Zizzo playing as the Undying, and then we have Supri playing the Clockwork, Frieza playing the Support Rasta, Sony gonna be playing as the Mid Solo Pugna, and finally we have Lion playing as the Safe Lane Death Prophet. I mean, what do you think of these two tri lanes up top? Whenever I see a tri lane that has uh, Undying included in it, I always just weep for whoever has to go against them, no matter what they're up against. Just whenever Undying is in the mix, once he does hit level 2, just the constant lower health from Decay and the Tombstone possibility, it just always seems to be like too much for any lane to handle. Oh man, this is gonna be. I mean, Undying is always one of the strongest heroes in the tri lane, but so is a keeper for the light. Um, ultimately, it comes down to. I don't even know. I, I don't. I don't think I should make any comment. Uh, <laughs> th this is so tough. Like Undying, th this hero. Ugh. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what though. Only growl. This is a game that I think I'm gonna absolutely love because denial. They've picked heroes, at least. For the most part, it seems like they've picked a setup and a lineup, and they're going to play it in a way they're very comfortable of doing, and TCN is doing the exact same thing. Bunch of early pressure, trying to make something happen, and now Smurf has been shackled. There is the Decay as well. Super, he wants to get a good battery assault, but a nice little Illuminate going down by Defect, and it looks like they might trade right away. Exiled, though, Freezer playing this exactly right, hiding in the trees as much as possible. Defect... Oh, the Illuminate just out of range, oh. and two kills already going the way of TCN. And Freezer, a, n a little note for anybody paying attention, chopping down trees, trying to make sure that if somebody wants to take him down, they're going to get trapped for their troubles. Wow. That, that, that's starting. Well, I was thinking maybe if they grab, say, the last hero, a ranged, ranged defensive hero, say, um, Jakiro, they could have rotated... The Keep of the light into the jungle and gone for that six minute mech strat. <clears throat> sure, you're not gonna get much farm on your carry Nagasaran if that was the way they went. Uh, but ultimately, just getting that really fast mech on the Keep of the light, um, they could be the ones pushing and putting on the pressure. Oh, yeah, and now just some cogs coming out of Super, trying to make sure that Smurf gets not only hurt, but a little bit of his mana getting taken out as well. DK playing pretty ballsy in the mid, actually, pretty low just in and of itself and Sony doing pretty nicely in the mid for himself actually a little bit behind but I mean doing none too bad and he's getting a lot of harass down on the DK just interrupted one of his salves did get quite a bit of regen out of it but not as much as you would have thought and on the bot lane it looks like Saylan gonna be having a much better time against Lion than he will against him oh And I mean, this feels yeah. really rough for the top lane of Denial right now. They can't move, they can't get in at all. They're getting completely and utterly zoned out. They could rotate mid, um, that is an option, but I like what Defect is doing. Um, just rotating rotating in the jungle, seeing that the tri lane has already been lost. Um, Exile should try to get some pulls going if possible. Uh, but then the sentry is just going to be blocking the pull camp. But he won't be able to pull. Um, instead, TCN, they're getting their pulls. Um, and that's one of the great benefits of having a yeah. aggressive trialing if you're on the Radiant team. You can always pull the big camp and utilize that additional farm. As well as pulling the creep wave back into your favor and just zone out zone out Smurf and zoning out the Exile. Um, but yeah, 
Keep of the Light, just finding the levels elsewhere. Um, that's always one of the great perks of heroes like Deck and Jungle. You can pop in and out of fights and go undetected. Oh yeah. But like you are saying, TCN clearly won this lane already. Smurf and Exile just pushed so far back that they're not even really gaining experience with uh, any level of certainty right now. Level 3 on the Smurf, while all the supports on TCN also level 3. Clockwork hitting 3 as well, and I mean, Exiled still only level 1. This is this is a hard place to be in, and usually you want your life stealer to come online kind of mid-game pretty early, and to make sure that he can actually contribute in some fights, and it definitely doesn't look that way. Yep, so right now Keep Up The Light is on the way to get that... Well, maybe not a six minute mech, but he is finding a lot more space for himself. Um, and I would assume that he's just waiting for DK to get to level six, and then he can rotate mid, go for that blast, and then DK zips in, grabs the Pugna, and then the blast hits, um, potentially helping out mid lane a bit more since he can't help top. Um, you might as well make the rotation and change the outcomes of other lanes. Maybe even rotating bottom to pair up the next assassin once he hits level six, uh, because the ganking potential from the two solo heroes on denial are very very strong, and they would be able to find pickoffs with a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. Now we actually have Zisu and Freezer smoking up, but uh, it definitely looks like denial feel that that smoke is happening. DK playing it pretty far to the right as far as this lane is concerned trying his very best and now he's actually so far back that he's uh, not even near the creeps right now and you know what it's just freezer and Zisu they say you know what we haven't seen keeper of the light in a very long time and if they actually do find him he is so incredibly low right now that he needs to be really careful freezer already using that ether shock almost would have been able to one shot him if he did find him does get the shackles off Trying to get just enough for an Ether Shock, but he just barely gets out of the way. And now the Tombstone, just for the vision, and Freezer getting a kill. But now he's really deep in enemy territory, playing peekaboo with these trees. And Smurf able to just find him in the last seconds. And now Zisu getting pulled back. Always does have Decay, and if he spams that, it's going to be very difficult to actually take him out. But Denial Smurf, along with DK, going to be able to finish him off nonetheless. While that's happening, you have a battery assault. The RNG, not quite with Supri, does cogs, but now these creeps basically saving Exile's life, so he is able to get out of there scot free. And, I mean, out of that engagement, yeah, you got a Keeper of the Light, but big whoop, you lost, you lost both your supports for one. Denial's got to be enjoying that. Exile, yeah, though, that just in a heap of trouble once again, and never mind. It looks like when there is a small glimmer of hope for Denial. TCN just shuts that door right away. Oh, but the next assassin's here. True, he has hit six. He's oh. looking for that vendetta. As soon as there's a TP in, however, he wants to make something happen, but Exiled is not the hero you want. He can't really add too much to a gank. Does get a stun. Where's that mana burn? Needs to use it so no cogs come down. There, finally does. And Supri now in a bit of trouble. Not sure if they can actually catch him. And Freezer is here to try and make sure that that, that does not happen. Magic Stick is always available on Clockwork and to shoot some rockets. So, I mean, an unfortunately failed gank by Ceylan there. Yeah, th that wasn't the hero they needed to TP down. Um, if it were a keep of the light... It might have been better. Or even the life stealer would have been nice as well. Um, but yeah, that that's a lot of bird burden on um, Storm Spirit and Nyx Assassin to make big plays happen now. Whereas PC and they're sitting pretty comfortably, getting their farm and yeah, just starting heading towards their mid game items. <laughs> oh yeah, but I mean DK and Denial, just in general, seemed to have a pretty hard time in every single lane. DK, while he was doing pretty good, he's actually now behind uh, Sony, just on the merit that, I mean, everything doesn't seem to be working very well for them. And, I mean, just TCN's warding has been impeccable. They have a sentry right away, pretty much as soon as the Nyx Assassin hit six. Boom, sentry in the mid. And not only that, just... I mean, two wards bordering it as well. They really don't want to let Sony get ganked for no reason. Yeah, uh, having a mid ward is a pretty standard ward against invis heroes because you always know, um, especially when you have a fragile mid solo hero. Um, in the old days when the bounty hunter was a very popular offlaner, as soon as 
he gets a couple of levels. Oh, as soon as he goes missing, one of the supports will be at mid, just planting that exact sentry ward down there and making sure nothing happens to your mid solo hero. Oh, another smoke goes down, and once again, Keeper of the Light in a really, really rough spot. Freezer, oh, unfortunate that these creeps happen to be exactly there, but they've only seen Freezer, they haven't yet seen Supri, but they have to guess it, of course. Defect now hiding in the trees, one big hook would have been enough, but can't quite do it, of course, because he's not level 6, this should give him it. And now, with that, Keeper of the Light needs to be so incredibly careful around Clockwork. One big hook into Cogs and Battery Assault, and you're pretty much guaranteed a kill on the Coddle. Oh, Zeland just playing that so carefully. He he's aware that um, th there's sentry wards around there. Oh, but yeah. what he doesn't know is there's an observer ward right behind the tier tier one tower as well. So they know that he's here as well. <laughs> and now it looks like they're trying to go in. There is the alt out of Supri Cogs and a bunch else. And Seda, I mean, he pops the spike care pace, but of course it's not going to be enough tombstone to guarantee that the supports do not want to hang around. Exiled needs to be run away from this one. DK. In the mid, though, trying to get as much damage onto this tower and stop this creep wave as much as humanly possible and, you know, basically try and make TCN take some sort of hit for the kills they're getting and make them pay at least a little bit. But Lion is here now, and if he can try and silence these two, he might be able to catch someone out. Now the TP's coming in, exiled, running into the jungle. Not too sure about that. Might actually get caught out by Lion. Will indeed. Crypt Swarm, not quite enough. Has a TP available. Needs to get out here. Crypt Swarm, so close to being off a of cooldown. Can't quite land it in time. While that's happening, DK finds a Zisu for his troubles. And with that, really tries his darndest to get the last hit on this tower, but it just will not fall quick enough, and that's going to be an easy deny for Lion. Well, wow, that was some really good rotations on TCN. Um, fortifying the the mid tower and then TPing into it when it's in deny range, and then just getting those easy denies. And TCN, and at the same time, they, all about these smokes Yeah, they took the well. top tier one as well. Yeah. And it looks like they're going to be going for a pretty big wraparound into the mid. DK has his invis, however, Ceylan looking for anybody he could possibly find. And once again, Coddle in a heap of trouble. Supry doesn't actually find him. The Cogs whiff entirely. Defect doesn't know where to go, though. He's just running around like a chicken with his head cut off and will be falling immediately, trying to buy at least a little bit of time. But the Tombstone is definitely going to turn this fight. Tombstone Netherward, what can you do against it? Ceylan, look how unbelievably slow he is moving and... I mean, with Tombstone and Netherward, all you can really say is, I need to get out of here, I need to back up, and we need to re-engage this fight. But, uh, I mean, with Supri there, and the option that he has to just run in, if you try to run away, he'll hook you, he'll cogs you. It just seems like Denial can't really, can't really get away from these team fights, and TCN can force them whenever they want. Wow, TCN, the way they're playing this game, is, is a little bit of reminiscent of, um... Seems like the old DTS when Art Style was the captain. Um, they're, they're just so good at pushing and they're so good at putting on the pressure early game. They know exactly how to transition from the early game into the mid game and just keeping it up. And so far they've been playing... It's a stellar performance. <laughs> oh yeah, they know Ceylan is here right now as well. DK clearly a bait and actually it looks like they were able to DK onto Ceylan and he did Spike Carapace that, but I mean, for what, really? And now a mech is now on Pugna, and that's exactly what you want to see on your mid Pugna. Picking up that pretty early mech, gonna make these pushes all that much scarier, and like we were saying, they don't really even need the creep wave to be effective here. The Serpent Wards are enough, Lion can tank this up as long as he has that exorcism going, because of course all that health will simply be replenished, and now, after about 12 minutes, this I, I think I said 12 minutes, 10 or 12 minutes in the uh, the draft, as soon as that hits and everybody has their six and everybody has, you know, their alts, they can pretty much five man it every single time. As soon as any alt is available, Serpent Ward's Exorcism, that's almost going to be a guaranteed dead tower. Wow, to me, th this didn't feel like a 12 minute game. So much has been going on. Uh, but, wow, I don't know if you want to look at this. The Gold golden graph? XP graph. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> oh, okay. Experience not so bad. <laughs> Yeah, because it is a pushing lineup. Yeah. Uh, but you're pushing really hard because you have five heroes clump clumped up constantly. Then they won't be getting a lot of levels. No, and of course, that tower gold, I wouldn't say the bulk of it, but 
definitely adding quite a bit to that gold graph for uh, for TCN now. Yep, and Rasta is heading towards his favorite item, the Aghanim Scepter. And Clockwork has gotten his four staff. Um, yeah, so TCN, the, the players are definitely finding the kind of items they need uh, to keep up the momentum. Um, they have a lot of team items like the Mech on the Pugna, the drums on the Death Prophet, and everyone's tanking up as well. Oh yeah, now um, so, it looks like we have a hook out of Clockwork, finds a smurf for his troubles, pops the rage and tries to get out of there in time, does indeed. One last little Death Prophet bolt, looks like it was flying across the map, not too sure if it will actually land. And now Coddle bringing him down into the mid, try and make sure he finds as much farm as humanly possible, because really, this lifestyle has had a rough start. And I'm not too sure, but I feel like this Gloves of Haste was supposed to be a Midas, and then he realizes that there is no time for that. No, they shouldn't. The now shouldn't be pushing the tier 2. They have to go back and defend. Uh, because PCN, they didn't even use the um, mass separate wards. And Lion is also holding on to his exorcism. If they don't defend this, uh, then the, the tier 3 will just disappear. Nice Caudal Blast, however. It was able to hurt them a little bit, but now with these Serpent Wards, there isn't even a single creep around here. Finally, they do come in. Exorcism, Serpent Wards, and Nether Blast. Pugna hasn't even skilled one point into Life Drain. That's how confident and how much they want to start to do these five-man pushes. He's gone 4-1-4 four, four, just to get as many points in another ward as humanly possible. And it really does seem like Denial can't deal with the obscene amount of push coming out of TCN. Now it is. There's the little bit of an infest bomb coming down. Surpy though, with some beautiful little cogs. And DK barely making it out of here alive so far. Smurf also falling. Those zombies. Zombies slowing him down just way too much. Can DK has just enough mana to get up there. As that's happening, Exiled can't really do too much. Has a Song of the Siren to try and stall, but all it will be is a stall. And this is a guaranteed lane of racks at the very least for TCN. Oh. Up against a, such a heavy pushing lineup. You give away a 15 minute racks. That's going to be really tough to recover. Especially when it's a support Naga Siren and your main carry is a Life Stealer, but Life Stealer just doesn't have the burst to take down anyone anymore. Um, Shadow Shaman has almost 1100 HP, and you got to count the EHP as well. I mean, um, let's not talk about armor because that that's a little tough to calculate on top. But we do There's have a Song of the Siren going down. They really do need to make something obscene happen. But right away, Freezer turning that Nyx Assassin into a chicken. Can't do too much. Caudal Blast does land, but it's not going to be enough. Undying Tombstone, just too much happening for anything to happen. Smurf can't find anything. The zombies slowing him down just too much, even through the rage. And Sayland now going to fall as well. Caudal, all he can do is hang back. And there's the GG, 16 minutes in. Ooh, what an obscenely quick game three, but TCN, everybody, is your ESPL Weekly Series 3 champs. They have just earned themselves $100 and some pretty large amount of league points. It's it's like a staggered, oh, you won the first round? Nothing. Second round, two, three, four, five. I think this is the sixth or fifth round. So six or five more league points for them and uh, 100 bucks. So overall... I mean, that was a pretty ridiculously quick, but, I mean, action-packed game, eh, Mido? Yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. I mean, the way... Well, I learned so much from how TCM played in this game. Um, just the general coordination of the heroes, as well as, like, how how they executed the draft. Well, it, it was very, very respectable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeedy. And so, of course... I have been Briefcase, along with my lovely co-caster Mito. Thank you all for joining us. And we actually hit about a thousand concurrent viewers in that last game there, which is, I mean, that's always nice to see at the very least. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this weekly ESPL series. There'll be another one next Sunday. Come along for that ride as well. And, uh, yeah, just thank you, everybody. Yep, and signups for next week are already open, so make sure you go to esp.gg and yeah, just sign up and hopefully we can cast one of your games next week. That's right, everybody. So come on, come play. You know you want to.